May this video be the flame that warms your heart, illuminating your path with the light of love and acceptance. Sadhguru Namaskaram. How to conduct oneself when, you know, when you have a very exploitative spouse, you know, you're talking about how to conduct him or yourself? Myself. No, actually you want to know how to fix him, right? No, Sadhguru. So, this is very important. I'm particularly talking to you. Please sit down. It's very important that we are straight with life, you understand? What you want is your husband fixed, but because you're sitting in front of me, you're saying, Sadhguru, how do I fix myself to fit into this exploitation? <laughs> Which is not the truth <laughs> You want to know how to fix the man? Yes or no? Please tell me all the ladies <laughs> If you perceive him, we don't know what he is, we're not talking about your husband. I do not know what he is, but if you perceive him as exploitative, obviously you want to fix him, isn't it? If you perceive yourself as a problematic wife, then maybe some thought about maybe I want to fix myself will come up. When you perceive somebody as exploitative, the intention is to fix them, isn't it? But we don't want to be straight about that. Because uh, the culture doesn't tell you, the culture tells you fixing your husband is not a good thing. <laughs> you must fix yourself. <laughs> so, if you get a headache, go for a foot surgery. Then the foot will be aching more than the head. <laughs> kind of fixed. <laughs> At least your attention is gone. So it's time, if we are concerned about life, it's time that we are one hundred percent straight, at least with ourselves. Maybe in the world we don't know what profession you have, what situations you have, we don't know how straight you can be, I will not interfere with that, but at least <laughs> with yourself, you must be hundred percent straight, very important. Otherwise, neither yourself nor your life situations will ever get fixed, simply complaining and going on. Life will be a lifelong complaint for a whole lot of people because they don't want to address it, they want to beat around it. So. Husband fixing program, we must do <laughs> No, we have fixed a whole lot of them because they became meditative and suddenly their exploitative nature went away because now they're busy with something else. So I, I don't want to get into a personal situation right now here, but uh, you must bring meditativeness into you and into your family. This is something we have to invest into life now. If you are not able to fix your husband, at least you must have a wish that the next generation of husbands are not exploitative. If you are interested in that, you must make sure your little boy that you have right now, you must fix him now with some meditation. Yes. Meditation is not about fixing him against something. It is just that meditativeness means to become in such a way that you are not the source of the problem. Wherever you are, you are a solution, you are not a problem. If you become a solution, 
Everybody will want you, wherever you are, isn't it? Whether it's your workplace, your family, on the street, wherever, whoever seems like a solution, that person everybody wants, yes or no? Either you're a problem or you're one who complains about problems, nobody wants to see your face. <laughs> you must know this. But if you're a solution, everybody wants you everywhere, including your husband. He will desperately want you if you are a solution to his life. Yes? So, it's important, not just you as a person, I'm saying everybody, it's important we understand. We need to understand, if we don't make this piece of life a pleasant piece of life, first of all, this is a fundamental thing. If you do this, after that you decide whether you need marriage, you don't need marriage, you need children, you don't need children, all these things you decide later. When this is miserable, you have no business to multiply it. Yes or no? Misery, I can't get along with my husband, I can't get along with my wife, already children, children, children coming, why? <laughs> if you cannot get along, how is this happening? Because we have chosen to live unconsciously. I'm not saying live this way or that way. Whatever the hell you do, you do it by choice and consciously, that's all. Knowing the full implications of what it means, yes? That much responsibility everybody must take, isn't it? If you do not bring into this, you will be a lifelong complaint. I will not tell you how to deal with your marriage. You bring this much into your life. Before marriage, no, Sadhguru, I didn't want, but my parents, you know, I got married. After marriage, I don't want to live in this marriage, but my children, you know. After the children have grown up, but you know, I have to wait for my grandchildren. <laughs> See, you have made yourself in such a way that you are a result of an unconscious process. You are not a result of a conscious process. When you are a result of an unconscious process, you are bound to be a miserable accident. Yes. It's time every human being takes responsibility to at least change this much. Then we can talk about big things, reaching the peak of your consciousness, mukti, moksha. Don't utter these words cheaply. <laughs> Don't utter these words. Just fix the fundamentals. The fundamentals are just this, whatever the hell you are right now, it's yours. Either you must have the courage to change it or you must learn to settle into it. Yes? Yes or no? You must… E either you must have the courage to change it or you must learn to settle into it. One of these things you must do, simply endless complaint for the rest of your life is no good. It is just that we must understand, if we are in certain state, everything feels like it's against us. You fix this, after that you decide which way your life should be. You stay there, there's a consequence, you get out, there's a consequence. Everything there is a consequence but at least let it be a conscious consequence. Instead of being a helpless, unconscious state of existence. Five, three forty, I just come awake because some changes happen in the nature at that time. I… my body just comes awake. If I want, I can get up and do what I want. If I don't want, I can sleep some more, but it always comes awake. So you have to bring some sensitivity into the system that, see, you are a product of this planet, yes or no? Whatever nonsense individuals may think about themselves, we are all a, just a pop-up from this planet. You've seen those pop-ups on the computer screen? Pop, pop, yes? <laughs> You're just a pop-up. 
you'll be gone. You can't believe you will be gone, huh? Me? I will be gone? Yes, all the very smart people, countless number of people who walked this planet before and you and me, where the hell are they, huh? Not a sign, all became topsoil, isn't it so? Weren't they pop-ups? Aren't you a pop-up? Poop, poop. You may think you have a great life and this and that, as far as the earth is concerned, it's just recycling its soil. Yes, throws you up and draws you back, throws you up and draws you back. So, in this little pop-up, the important thing and the most important thing is, you create sensitivity within you, such sensitivity that every dimension of life comes into your experience. Before you fall dead, is it not important? You experience this life in this fullest possible scale, Yes or no? Experience means people think, we must party every day. No, no, same damn thing, how many times you will do? There is much more for the human life to explore. You must become sensitive. When I say sensitive, because the word sensitive is used in a wrong way in the sense, when people say, oh, she is very sensitive, we are supposed to understand, uh, she will get hurt for just about anything. Yes? No, being sensitive to life and being ego-sensitive are two different things. Being sensitive to life means if you walk into this hall, you experience everything that's here, you don't miss a thing. If you walk outside, you don't miss a thing, every dimension of life should come into your experience. This happened. Shankar and Pillai bought a work… Uh, what? He bought a work donkey. And the man who was selling the donkey said, see, this is a very sensitive donkey. You cannot beat this donkey. You cannot use bad words, you cannot abuse this donkey. Shankaram Pillai said, that's great. Every day I'm tired of beating these donkeys and abusing every day. I have to use filthy words to get these donkeys moving. I like a sensitive donkey and he played li paid little extra bonus for the sensitivity of the donkey and took it home. He left it in his… in the barn and tomorrow morning he has to go to work. He went there and told the donkey, please let's go. No response. He said, please let us go, nothing. He went down on his knees and prayed, nothing. You're not supposed to abuse it, you're not supposed to beat it. Not knowing what to do, he went back to the man who sold the donkey. See, I pr I, I requested, I pleaded, I prayed, he's not responding, what am I supposed to do? That man said, is that so, let me see, and he came. He picked up a thick stick like that. One whack on the head, and then he threw the stick and said, come. The donkey followed. Shankar and Bilai got furious, you idiot, you said it's a sensitive donkey and the way you hit this animal, I've never hit an animal like this in my life. He said, no, 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 he's very sensitive, first you have to get his attention. <laughs> so developing sensitivity means if you simply close your eyes, uh, you must know what face of moon it is right now because all this is playing in your body. Every day it is playing in your system. Do you see if it's a full moon or a new moon, the entire ocean is coming up? There are tides, isn't it? You ever been to the ocean side or you don't? You do? There are tides? Yes. The whole ocean is trying to rise. Seventy-two percent of your body is water. You think nothing is rising? It is? For every position of the sun, moon and many things that are happening to the planet, they're happening to you. You must become life sensitive. Then you will know how to manage every aspect of your life. Don't become ego sensitive, don't become society sensitive. Life sensitive if you become. What's happening this, this, with this life if you know this one thing all the time? You will see, you got your GPS on, there's really no problem, you will never get lost. It doesn't matter who says what, 
what kind of situations you are put into, you are never ever lost because you are life sensitive. This is all this life needs, that this has to become life sensitive. Right now we have developed a psychological structure which has got nothing to do with life, it's got something to do with the social scene, got nothing to do with the life. Thank you very much. I think people… Are we okay? Because people were looking at watches, so I thought I've exceeded my time. Um, that was the last question we were taking. Uh, if you have any other questions, you can put it up on social media. Uh, Sadhguru, we would like to thank you so much no, no, for no. gracing us with your presence today. <laughs> we would like to thank… Well, I would like to say a few words. All of you young girls or women or however we refer to you, you look like girls to me. That may be because of my… See, I want you to understand, everywhere in the world but particularly in our country, so many young women of your age in rural India, in various other levels of society, what all they are going through in terms of lack of nourishment, lack of education, abuse, all kinds of terrible things, no opportunity of any kind. All of you have come into a premier institution like this, make this a possibility, don't get tangled up with your own thoughts, emotions and make a misery out of this life. You must become a great possibility for yourself and every other life around you, hmm? Beyond… beyond gender, beyond race and religion, even beyond nationality, just function as a human being. This education should become an empowerment to empower you to become a great human being because without producing great human beings, we are not going to produce a great nation. May the best be with you. Thank you very much. First of all, you must understand what is inside, okay, and what is outside. If you do not understand what is inside and outside, then you will go to all the wrong places. Now, what is inside? Your body accumulated over a period of time, yes or no? Hello? Ma? What you accumulate, can be yours, cannot be you. Is that much clear? Whatever it may be. What you accumulate can be yours, cannot be you. So this body is an accumulation. What you call as my mind, the whole content of the mind is accumulated, depending upon what you're exposed to in your life. So your body is a heap of food, small or big. Your mind is a heap of impressions, again small or big. Between these two heaps, where the hell are you? So, inside, outside, leave these words because when it comes to language, there is only that much leeway. So within that, maybe different people are trying to use it in different ways. We don't know in what context they used. You put everybody into one bundle and say, all of you said this, I don't know who these all people are. Different people employ different methods around them, looking at the people around them, what was best suitable for the people around them accordingly, they would have worked most probably. If they're genuine, they would have worked with the people around them, not with concepts from somewhere. What… looking at an individual person, you will do something, what works for that person. What you do with this person may not work for another person, you will have to do something else with that person. But you're talking about a generic inward-outward. So first determine what is inward, outward. Everything is outward right now. The world is outside, body is also external material, Every, all the material in the mind also is external. So what is this inward you're talking about? Then you will immediately say, atma, paramatma, soul, this one. Now you're going into belief system. You don't know. You know you have a body, yes? Hello? Please check your neighbors <laughs> You know you have a body. You believe you have a mind.
but to some extent you know. But rest is belief, yes or no? Yes. I am not questioning whether it's true or false, let's not go there at all. But it's belief, it's not yet in your experience. If you talk about something which is not yet in your experience, to put it bluntly, you're just a bloody liar. That's what it means. But because lies are holy, lies are written in scriptures, lies are repeated by all kinds of people who are dressed in different ways which are supposed to be holy though ridiculous. Because of this, you're not supposed to question these words. Anywhere you go, first thing is people say, Sadhguru, what about the soul? So ask them which soul, right or left? <laughs> so, let's not talk about something that is not in your experience. Right now your body is in your experience to some extent, your mind is in your experience to some extent, rest you don't know. But we can infer, if I have to ca ca accumulate this much body, if I have to accumulate this much mind, something more fundamental must be there. Yes? Something more fundamental must be there. We don't know what the hell it is. For now, we will call it you. How you will go into yourself? I'm asking. You can go into this hall, you can go out of this hall. How will you go into yourself? I'm asking. Saying, let's leave this, this is not the way. You do this way. What is not you? All those things you keep it aside. Before today, if you… before you go to bed, everything that's not you, keep it aside. They may be precious to you. You think about it, your house, is it you? Oh, my house. All right, you have lots of passion about it, but all right, keep it aside. Your husband, is it you? No, that's easy, he's not me <laughs> My children, are, is the… are they me? Oh, little difficulty, but no, they're not me. They're beginning to tell you if they're twelve, they already told you <laughs> So the clothes that you wear, is that you? No. The body that you wear, is that you? No. All these thoughts and emotion, is this you? No. Everything that's not you, keep it in one heap. Not physically, just do this mentally. Keep everything aside. Let me see. Every day you practice this, one day when you successfully keep everything aside that you are not, what you are will be there. We have too many ideas about things that we have not seen, it's a big problem. Shankaran Pillai went to Britannia <laughs> Can I? Shankaran Pillai went to Britannia Industries to find a job, <laughs> to find a job. So they were looking for a really smart, forcing sales manager. So they asked him one question. Which is further, Mumbai or Moon? Thank you, I thought. He said, Mumbai. I said, what? Mumbai is further than the moon? He said, yes. How? Well, I can see the moon, I can't see Mumbai <laughs> So what I'm saying is, if you go by your present perception, you'll get all the wrong conclusions. So don't be in a rush to make conclusion. Let's pay a little more attention. You are a worthwhile life which deserves some attention, isn't it? Don't seek other people's attention. Your own attention, doesn't this life deserve attention? Pay attention to this. Enough attention, everything will be clear. Everything about you, you're asking me, if I tell you what you have, you have some more words. Some more words you have, 
that will not get you anywhere near the truth. One more word or ten more words doesn't get you any closer to reality, just you'll have more things to say to somebody else. This kind of hearsay is spreading in the world. Everybody knows where God is, who his wife is, how many children he has, when is his birthday, his address. In every bhajan, people are singing his address, where he is and how to get him, but they don't know a damn thing about themselves. This kind of, uh, what to say, a very knowledgeable ignorance is dangerous, <laughs> no? If you do not know, it's not a problem. If I see I do not know, the possibility of knowing is always there, isn't it? If I do not know and I think I know, then I've destroyed all possibilities. So, we have arrived at many things, we know, in every culture they know what is the nature of God, where He resides, how the ambience is there and the works, you know. You… everybody knows the geography of the heaven, isn't it, don't you? But you don't know a damn thing about yourself. It's time, it's time we paid attention because everything you know, you know it only the way it's projected in the firmament of your mind. You don't know anything any other way, yes or no? So, what you need to fix is, you are seeing everything in a mirror of your mind and the mirror is wonky, first fix it. First thing is to make it stable, flat, proper plain mirror so that you see everything the way it is. Does a plain mirror show you everything the way it is? everything reverse, you know, then you will have to flip it, that'll take much more skill. Most people can't flip a dosa. <laughs> now, to flip the whole universe, the whole life that is reflecting in your mind, to flip it over without shattering it into pieces will take much more. But the first thing is to level out the mirror so that it shows you everything the way it is, not some other way. Right now, everything is seen depending upon how you're identified with something. Every identity has distorted the mirror of your mind and it shows you things in completely different way than the way it is. First thing is stop talking about things that you do not know. No soul, no atman, no paramatman, no god, no divine, no heaven. Talk about something that you know and then the longing to take the next step will become strong. Otherwise, when you know the geography of the heaven, what is the need to pay attention to anything? We appreciate you being part of this incredible journey. Keep exploring our channel for more inspiration and transformative insights. fast, red light shadows casting past, music pumping through my veins, echoes hum in electric planes, who starts beat moving so, electronic soon and so, piano keys light the path, red bass thumping, clear aftermath, midnight pulse, Beats so strong, sits in sacks all night long. Feel the rhythm in your soul, let the funk take control. Clear vocals pierce the air, melodic waves everywhere. Synth and bass start to blend, dancing beats never end. Electric dreams within reach Saxon sense 
you beseech Thumping bass in the night Feel the groove take flight Midnight pulse beats so strong Sits in sacks all night long Feel the rhythm in your soul Let the funk take control Dreams within reach Sacks and sense to beseech Pumping bass in the night Feel the groove take flight Midnight pulse beats so strong Sets and sacks all night long Feel the rhythm in your soul Let the funk take control Neon sunrise paints the sky One last dance before we say goodbye Electricity fades away But the memory will always stay 